Hello everyone, my name is Joseph, welcome to Broadview. Today let's talk about one of the most incredible archaeological discoveries made throughout history, the Antikythera Mechanism. It was 120 years ago during the fall of 1901, a Greek captain named Dimitros Kontos led his crew to collect sponges. He wasn't looking for the chemical sponges that we use now because this type of sponge wasn't invented in that time. He was after the porous marine animals. Now on his way back, the crew suddenly encountered a severe storm. The ship was blown off course to a Greek island called Antikythera. The captain wanted to try his luck again and instructed his team to dive into the sea in search of sponges. But instead, the crew found a shipwreck at the depth of about 60 meters. Being submerged underwater for so long, the ship was severely damaged. It was mixed with sand and rock, of course. Kondos reported the discovery to authorities of the Greek government. The National Archaeological Museum of Athens immediately sent a team of experts to the reported location. Indeed, the team found works of art including marble statues, sculptures, pottery and glassware. They tried to salvage the artifacts on the ship, and the retrieval process took two years to complete. Meanwhile, the Greek archaeologists also began their examination of the artifacts. A year after the discovery of the shipwreck, Valerio Stays, a well-known Greek archaeologist, found three peculiar fragments among the many discovered objects. Measuring intervals could be seen on the fragments. This finding immediately sparked the interest of many archaeologists. The majority of the salvaged objects were works of art, while these fragments looked to be part of an industrial product. Using metal detection technology, it was determined that the fragments were made of bronze. The ship sank around the 1st to the 3rd century BC, that's 2100 to 2300 years ago. Upon cleaning the fragments, gears were found inside. The discovery of the gears immediately shocked the archaeological community. The earliest metal gears were thought to have appeared between the 13th to 14th centuries, but this metal gear dated in the BC era, which is astonishing. If true, this would demand a rewriting of our known history. At first, many people thought that these fragments didn't originate from the shipwreck. Possibly, after the ship sank for more than a thousand years, another ship happened to pass by this place and dropped the mechanical device there. But later, experts proved that the mechanism really originated from that shipwreck. It was the earliest metal gears of mankind, made more than 2,000 years ago. So here's an obvious question. How did a bunch of ancient people holding rough bronze swords make this sophisticated mechanism? And what is this mechanism, and what is it used for? There were more questions than answers. One century ago, advanced detection instruments weren't available, so it wasn't possible to figure out the design inside. At the time, only three pieces were found. These three pieces were projected to be a very small part of the whole mechanism. The only way to gain a better understanding of this mechanism was to find the other pieces and then put them together. In the ensuing decades, many people dove into the area to look for other fragments. Only four more pieces have been found so far. But these four pieces are particularly small and ultimately they didn't provide important insights. However, one of the archaeologists who searched for the fragments made a discovery that played a pivotal role in understanding the shipwreck and what the mechanism is. This man was the famous French marine archaeologist Jacques Cousteau. He invented the aqua lung design, which gave birth to the open circuit scuba technology used today. Now in 1976, more than 70 years after the discovery of the shipwreck, he dove down to the bottom of the sea and found many bottles for holding red wine. He also located bits of the ship, through which he concluded that it was a galley, and this kind of ship had two main functions at that time. First, it was used in battle, similar to the battleships that we use today. Merchants also used it for trade, equivalent to the present day container ships. Jacques Cousteau also found some coins. The coins were used to determine the age of the ship. At the time, there were many small countries in Europe, all of which issued their own coins. But these countries didn't last that long and soon got overthrown. Therefore, the coins would most accurately tell when the ship had sunk. Also, the coins belonged to different countries, so the sailing route of the ship could be speculated through these coins collected. After analyzing, the experts concluded that a Roman merchant had stopped in Turkey and Greece, where he loaded all kinds of fine artwork. On his way back to Rome, he passed by the island of Antikythera. He encountered a storm and the ship ultimately sank. All of the treasures on board sank to the bottom of the sea and lay there for 2,000 years. So how did these countries obtain this mechanism at that time? And what was it used for? 
Archaeologists spent decades trying to find the answers. With technology advancements, the mystery finally got unveiled. A key technology called X-ray computed tomography emerged. This is similar to the CT scan used by the doctors. A scan found that inside of the mechanism there were meshing gears. 27 gears were found inside the three fragments to be exact. The fragments were only a part of the mechanism. Now through extrapolation, the overall structure is estimated to contain at least 60 gears. Upon the discovery of so many gears, the archaeologists concluded that this was a mechanical computer. Nowadays we use electronic computers. Before electronic computers came out, mechanical computers were used, which leveraged complex mechanical structures to perform calculations. Before this discovery, the earliest complex mechanical structure known to mankind was the first clock that appeared in Europe in the 14th century. But the clock is far less complex compared to the Antikythera mechanism. The Antikythera mechanism is equivalent to the level of technology in the 18th century. It is a full 2,000 years ahead of the mechanisms with similar complexity. So what exactly does this mechanism calculate? Archaeologists studied it for a long time and they finally concluded that this thing was an astronomical computer. It was used to calculate the movement of celestial bodies. How did they know? Well, it was by looking at the number of teeth on the gears. Archaeologists found a rather complete gear near the front of the mechanism with 127 teeth. The number 235 was engraved on the back of this gear. 235 is an ordinary number for most of us, but it sent a strong signal to the archaeologists because 235 appears in many ancient Greek astronomical and religious literatures. The ancient Greeks tracked time through observing the moon. They believe that the moon went through cycles during the span of a month. Nowadays, this is called the lunar month. On average, there are 29 and a half days within a lunar month, so 12 months add up to 354 days. The lunar calendar results in 11 days less per year than the solar calendar. Through long-term observations, the ancient Greeks found that every 235 lunar months is 19 solar years. Therefore, the number 235 is explained. When the gear spun for a complete round, it represented the overall cycle of rotation for the sun, earth, and the moon. This is 19 years. The Greeks were also knowledgeable of another cycle of the moon. In this cycle, the moon appears in a position in the sky, and then after the cycle, it returns to the same position. This isn't a lunar month, but rather a sidereal period of the moon. It takes 27.3 days. 19 years is exactly 254 sidereal periods. How is the number 254 relevant? We've just talked about the gear with 127 teeth on it. It's exactly half of 254. So this gear with 127 teeth on the front and 235 measuring intervals on the back was used to simulate the position of the sun, earth, and moon in a cycle of 19 years. Are you following? In addition to this gear, it has a larger gear on the back, which has 223 teeth. So what does 223 represent? According to Sumerian astronomical records, 223 months is exactly one cycle of a total solar eclipse. So this largest gear is used to calculate solar eclipses. So why did the ancient peoples over 2000 years ago want to know such precise celestial movements? Were they looking to land on the moon? There are probably two reasons. On the one hand, the precise knowledge of celestial movements will be helpful for farming and many other activities. Also, it's believed that being able to accurately predict solar and lunar eclipses was really important for ancient rulers. The rulers needed to know the eclipses to hold rituals. His people would also respect and admire his knowledge of astronomy. In fact, there was an even more incredible finding, a gear with 53 teeth. We now know that when the moon revolves around the earth, it's not perfectly circular, but slightly elliptical. The elliptical orbit itself is also moving. The major axis of the moon's elliptical orbits rotates by one complete revolution every nine years. Therefore, it takes nine years for the moon to move back to its original position. If this mechanism imitated the movements of the moon, it took into account this orbital offset into the calculation. Therefore, the gear with 53 teeth was used to correct the orbital movement. This calculation is accurate to nine decimal places. There was another major discovery. A slot existed right before the front gear. A round object was inside the slot, but no one knew what it was for. After scanning the whole mechanism, a model was built. Through turning the gears in the model, it was found that the round object was actually the moon. 
As the gear spun, the moon's movement simulated the actual movement of the moon around the Earth, just like the real celestial bodies. Well, we've uncovered the mystery behind the purpose of the mechanism. So the next question is, who designed it? The prevailing theory is that this mechanism is related to the Corinthians. Why? Well, because archaeologists later found more writing on the gears, with several words matching the ancient Corinthian name for the month. Also, there was a very well-known person among the descendants of the Corinthians. He was Archimedes, the famous mathematician, physicist, astronomer, and inventor. According to historical records, Archimedes was a super genius. He used water to power a large astronomical computer that could accurately depict solar and lunar eclipses and the movements of the five planets. When ancient Romans attacked Syracuse, Archimedes invented various powerful tools to defend his land against the ancient Romans. He built machines that threw stones and javelins. He also built cranes. The cranes he built could lift the ancient Roman ships and break them. Because of Archimedes' inventions, the ancient Romans didn't succeed in their attacks for many years. Later, the Roman general Marcus Claudius Marcellus concluded that the war was actually between the Roman fleet and Archimedes alone. He eventually thought of a way to capture Syracuse. He cut off the water and food to the city and then attacked it. A Roman soldier finally killed Archimedes. There is direct evidence for the authenticity of this story. A famous Roman politician named Marcus Tullius Cicero wrote a book called De Republica in 54 BC. It mentioned that the Romans killed Archimedes and took away two mechanisms that could calculate the movement of celestial bodies. They also took away the design manuscript. For the looted mechanisms, Marcellus himself kept one. The other one was sent to Rome. Cicero claimed that he had seen the one kept by Marcellus. Previously, archaeologists had thought that this book was a fictional dialogue until the discovery of the Antikythera mechanism in 1901, when they suddenly realized that the content of the book was true. But where did the second machine and the drawings go? No one actually knows in the end. No one like Archimedes was born for the next 1500 years, so the technology didn't get passed down. Now this Antikythera mechanism is kept in the National Archaeological Museum in Athens. The general public visiting the museum could only view the replicas. The real Antikythera mechanism is said to be much more expensive than the Mona Lisa. Archaeologists explain the significance of this mechanism. It changed our view of the ancients. The ancients could have been fundamentally different from our understanding of them. Well, that's it for today's program. I wonder what do you think about this machine? Do you know of any other ancient technologies that you'd like us to report on? Feel free to leave your comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.